Hey everyone, welcome back to NG! Um, I don't know really what to do. I don't think he needs a shower right now. I might just back up. Should I just go to bed? Because he doesn't know what to do. Can't go to sleep yet, I gotta figure out a way to save Ami. I don't know, dude. I don't know what you want to do. Because I looked at the mirror already, right? I'm more than familiar with this mirror. Can you do no blood stains? Um, I still have all the things. I didn't use this compact mirror at all. Oh, that is it. Maybe hurry and join didn't mean to hurry and join her there, but hurry and join the mirrors. I heard when you hold mirrors up to one another to reflect each other, it's called a spirit road. What the fuck? I got it right? I'm sure Natsumi had heard of that before since she's a horror writer. Got no interest in supernatural stuff, so I'd completely forgotten about it until now. Should I give it a shot? I take the compact mirror out of my bag and hold it up to the mirror. Does it work? A thin, pale arm stretched out of the mirror as if breaking a watery surface. Ami? I immediately grabbed the small, quivering hand. I could feel her body heat through my glove. Hold on, I'll save you! I brace against the sink with my right hand and pull with all my might with my left. <coughs> Damn it, you're heavy. Ami's arm doesn't budge easily. It's like a weed firmly rooted in the ground. Her arm slowly gets absorbed back into the mirror. If I stop pulling for a second, I'll get, I'll get dragged in with her. Damn it. I finally got you. I'm not letting you go. I fill my lungs with air and pull with all my weight. Don't pull her arm off. I catch Ami as she tumbles out of the mirror and I fall on my back. Is it her? When Ami looks up at me, she gives me that warm smile that she's always had. And then she slowly closes her eyes, relief clear on her face. Her breathing and pulse are calm. Looks like she's fainted, though. Is it really her? I'm consider I consider letting Ami sleep on the bed while I collapse on the floor, but... I really don't feel like spending the night here. Since there's a mirror connecting to the realm of the dead where Kakia is, anything can happen. What the fuck? I didn't think we would just pull her out like that. I hoist Ami onto my back while she sleeps and head to the Black Rabbit. That place should still be safe, though I am being targeted by spirits, so it's not by much. We should go to the hospital, to where the mom is. A cool, refreshing breeze blows, a rarity on warm summer nights like these. My mind and body are exhausted, but the sensation still feels strangely bad. Feeling Ami's warmth on my back makes it all finally seem real. I came close to dying so many times, and there have been a lot of victims, but I finally rescued Ami. It's not over yet. As long as Kakia exists, her game will continue. I'll be plagued by this curse of death. Ami could just get caught up in it again. Aunt Natsumi's still in a coma, too. There's only one way to really end this. We have to get Kakia. I gotta put an end to Kakia with my own hands. I didn't think we would actually get Ami out. What the fuck? When we get to the Black Rabbit, I carry Ami inside and lay her on Natsumi's daybed. Then I collapse at a random seat in the bar. Kakia could, con could come to get Ami back. As long as that possibility exists, I have to sleep with one eye open. Wow! I did not ex uh, expect the, the chapter to end like that. Jesus. Okay. Yeah, I'll save. Good, good, good. As I yawn for what must be the hundredth time, I give my neck and shoulders a good rub. They ache with heavy dullness. I like to think that I can take more than your average Joe, but apparently even I'm worn out. Is Ami still asleep? It's already noon, but it looks like Ami hasn't moved since I brought her here. I'm sure she's just really tired, but if this is more than just sleep, I'll have to call a doctor. Got a text. Earlier I sent out messages saying that Ami is safe. That's probably someone replying to that. Amanome doesn't hide his happiness. He also doesn't hide his shock when I tell him about what happened to Natsumi. 
Apparently, Amanome is still under house arrest. There's no reply from Hazuki. She probably hasn't recovered yet. Ban just says, that's great. Which is pretty much what I'd expected he'd say. Rose is very interested in how I was able to save Ami from the mirror. I guess that's the sort of thing that would make a supernatural specialist like her interested. Oa is extremely worried about Ami's condition. She says she's got time this evening, so she'll swing by the Black Rabbit. Send a text to Natsumi, who's still unconscious in the hospital, so naturally, there's no reply. She was the one who was most desperate to get Ami back, so it sucks that she can't hear the news. Yeah, that really sucks. <gasps> She's back! Ami, are you feeling okay? Yeah, did you save me? Kinda. Relax, you're safe now. Big bro. Ami starts crying. She launches herself into my arms and breaks into sobbing. Thanks. Aww, she's back! She stands there for a while, crying. Now, how are we going to get out of this mess, though, with Kakuya? You okay now? Yeah. She wipes away her tears and grins. She, if she can smile, then she's probably alright. Hey, Ami, can you tell me what happened? If it's too hard for you, I can wait, but... No, it's fine. I can talk about it. Okay, then. What do you want to know? What happened the night you disappeared? You mean, what happened when we got back to your place? After we almost got run over by that van? It seems like so long ago now. I heard a scream and rushed to the bathroom, but no one was there. Kakia suddenly appeared in the mirror. I was shocked and then she just dragged me in. Why would Kakia abduct you? She said it was because I lost her game. Because I didn't give you an offering to Yuri. Yuri. The blemetry scene of Ami's headphones I saw before. Yuri Takamura's voice asked Ami to offer her flowers. <laughs> that was probably Kakeya's doing. Do you want to know about something else? You were in the realm of the dead the whole time, yeah? What exactly is the place like? How should I put it? Ami tilts her head in thought. My head felt kind of fuzzy. Like I couldn't ever really tell if I was awake or just dreaming. And I never got hungry, even though I never ate anything while I was there. It's not a lot of information. Sorry. I don't really understand it either. Do you want to know anything else? Kakia! Was Kakia always with you? No, not always. Just sometimes. She would talk with me and play with me. What would she talk about? Um... I think she only ever talked about you. Me? She asked me a bunch of questions. Like about your past, hobbies, favorite games. I guess she was interested in me because I survived their games. Oh yeah, Ami. Did Kakia say anything about that NG thing? Let's turn the volume down. It's way too loud. There you go. Oh, much better. No, she never said anything about it. I was curious too, so I asked her, but she didn't tell me. Hmm. Did she say anything else that caught your attention? Actually, do you know anything about the demon Tsukuyomi? No, never heard of it before. What is it? I don't know. I just remember Kakia talking about it. The demon Tsukuyomi. That has an ominous ring to it. Is it another spirit? Do you want to know about something else? That's everything I needed to know. Based on her responses, Ami seems to be her normal self. I was worried she might have some effects from being in the realm of the dead, but I guess not. If that's the case, she can probably handle the news about Aunt Natsumi. I'll have to tell her at some point anyway. Better to do it sooner rather than later. Hey Ami, I gotta tell you something about Aunt Natsumi. What about Mom? Staying calm for this, alright? She's in the hospital right now. Kakia got her somehow while she was trying to save you. Yeah, I know. Seriously? You saw her? 
Kakia told me. Probably just to scare me. She looks like she's about to cry, but she's doing a good job of holding it in. She probably doesn't want to worry me. If I were all alone, I would probably- I probably would have cried. But I have you, so I'm okay. Oh, she's too sweet! Ami. Ami-chan! Hey! He escaped! How are things going? Oh there! Looks like I put the brakes on your sibling reunion. Want me to come back later? Amanome, what are you doing here? Well, you know, I heard you saved Ami, so I couldn't just sit around. Glad you're safe, Ami. Yeah, thanks. You helped my brother out, right, Seiji? Yeah, because your brother's a hopeless idiot sometimes. If I didn't rein him in every once in a while, he'd probably run straight off a cliff. You haven't changed a bit. Want me to sock you? Calm down, jeez. I struggled to break out just for you. You could show me a little appreciation. What do you mean you broke out? Pops got mad at me after what happened to Maruhashi and put me on house arrest, in case we forgot. But he and a second-hand man stepped out today, so there was a hole in the security detail. I threatened the guy charged with watching me and finally managed to get away. You're gonna be in hot water later. Yeah, probably. But I couldn't just do nothing. I gotta get back to those spirits that thought they could get the best of me. I swear on the crest of the Amanome family. I'm gonna knock him straight to hell. Amanome. Ami's back safe and sound. There are still major problems that we need to deal with, but I want to celebrate Ami's return for at least one day. Yeah, I bet Kakia's gonna show up again. I let out a big yawn, unsure of what to do now that I actually had time to it myself for a change. You sound bored, Gabu. You wanna go grab something sweet to eat? Nah, I can't. Oe's gonna be here soon, apparently. Oh, that cop lady. Oe, that cop lady, right? What does she want? I glance at the door to the kitchen. Ami's napping in there right now. She seems fairly, fairly energetic, but I'm sure she's exhausted. I guess we just wait around till then? Wanna kill some time? Yeah. What are we gonna do? Oh. The mahogany bar counter is so well polished that I can see my reflection in it. Behind it are shelves lined with bottles. No laptop this time. Wall further inside has a big plasma TV mounted on it. The door on the left leads to the bathroom and the right goes to the kitchen. The room Ami's napping in is in the kitchen. There's a writing desk and bookshelves. Not normal to see these in a bar. Anatsumi is a horror author and this is where she writes when she's here in the bar. Oh, what's that book? It's got some fancy Japanese style binding. Hmm? Was that book here before? On top of the desk is an old-fashioned book bound with string. The book's slightly faded cover is scarlet. Hey! Hi! Save for a white rectangle with the author and title. Hi, baby! Come here! Oh, Nagashi no Gi! Yakumo Miroku! Why is one of Yakumo Miroku's books here? Miroku is the children author you talked about, right? The psycho who killed young girls. Yeah. Come here. The maniac who kidnapped girls and turned them into dolls and left them in his mansion. Yakumo Miroku. And that title, Nagoshi no Ki. I feel like I've heard that somewhere before. Oh no. Kitty's on my earbuds. <laughs> there you go. That's right, Anatsumi. She said it on the phone before she collapsed. I went home and looked through Miruko's old works, and it's part of Nagoshi no Gi, the realm of the dead. The reason Miruko victimized those girls, her, his relationship with Kakia. If I read this, I might be able to find out. No, baby. So cute. Nagoshi no Gi is a short story featuring a certain man as the protagonist. For generations, the man's family performed a rite called the Nagoshinogi. The rite was meant to seal a doll-shaped spirit by the name of Kaguya. <laughs> Cat hairs in the air. Kaguya played with humans using various games and stole their lives and consciousness. 
But the man's ancestor, who was a spirit medium, caught Kaguya, Kaguya and sealed her in a certain place. He sealed her inside a mirror, in a world known as the Realm of the Dead. The Nagasinogi is a ceremonial rite used to keep Kaguya sealed inside the mirror. When a special doll filled with spiritual powers given to Kaguya as a playmate, Kaguya becomes satisfied for about 10 years until the doll loses its power. Every 10 years, the doll must be recharged with energy and offered back to Kaguya. That was the duty given to the man's family who descended from that spirit medium. After his father's death, the man was also going to inherit that right, as was his family's custom. As long as the right continued peacefully, Kaguya would never happen appear in the real world again. Or at least, that's how it should have been. No, oh, BB. The man lost his spiritual powers in an accident before he had any successors. Because of that, the Nagoshi no Gi was unable to be performed. If Kaguya's seal was released, there would be many, many victims. The man was bound by his duty and devised an alternate method. He took drastic steps to find something to replace his lost powers. The Nagashinagi he devised was to take living girls, make them into dolls, and offer them to Kaguya in the realm of the dead. The pain, regrets, and grudges held by the girls would be a substitute for his spiritual powers. Just as the man hoped, Kaguya was delighted and remained in the mirror. But then he died! The man had turned the Nagashinagi into a blood-soaked ritual. Nevertheless, the man continued to fulfill his duty. For that was the fate of all those born into that household. And then it died with him. I had to pause after that part. I think about the bizarre ritual described in the book. If this isn't just fiction, what but was based on reality instead, then were Midoku's murders, they were done to seal Kakia? Once every 10 years, Miroku killed a girl and made her into a doll in order to maintain the seal. But then Miroku died, and now Kakuya is free. I don't know exactly what happened, but the seal must have failed. I keep reading and find details on that rite and the realm of the dead. One part of it says, If Kakuya opens a path to the realm of the dead in a mirror, it can be reopened by joining mirrors. Ah, Natsumi must have read this. I read all the way to the end, but nothing else sounds particularly helpful. It doesn't even say what NG is. Damn, what a waste. I slammed the book shut and shoved it back into the bookshelf. Yeah, I feel ya. The book was creepy, man. Oi! Yorashu talomude. Sorry I'm late. I'm expecting big things from you today. Hmm? You're Amanome, yeah? Huh? So you're Oi. It's the first time we've actually met. I've heard a ton of rumors about you. I'm sure none of them were very good. I don't plan on making friends with the pampered prince of the Amanome family. I work for the police, not your pal. Hey now, no need to be so angry. I'm not even an official member yet anyway. I'm just an ins insignificant high schooler. That's rich coming from Mr. Threats himself. But whatever. We'll all put that on pause. I'm not after you right now. Gabu, we have customers? Ami steps out from where she was sleeping. Seems all the noise woke her up. She looks up at Oe curiously, since she's never met her. Hmm. So you're Ami, huh? Your brother told me everything. I'm glad you're safe. You don't feel strange or anything, do you? No, I'm fine. Just a little tired and sleepy. That's so. You might be suffering from mild dysautonomia after all you went through. Hey Gabu, you should get her checked at a hospital. I can arrange an appointment for her. Yeah, let's do that. You think so too, huh? You don't have to worry so much. I'm fine, really, so... It's just to be safe, Ami. Come on, it'll, it'll make your worry ward brother happy. Okay. I'll go in for an examination, just for you. Ah, you guys. That decides it. Let's go let's get going before they stop seeing patients for the day. Gabi, did you already tell her about Natsumi? Yeah, I told her. Yeah? Then let's go visit her while we're at it too. 
I'm sure she'd be relieved if Ami came to see her. Yeah. Maybe she'll wake up? Who knows? We all leave the bar. Oh, it leads us over to the hospital where Aunt Natsumi is staying. After visiting her, Ami goes in for her own examination. They decide to keep her at the hospital overnight for the exam. Wow. Kind of extensive, don't you think? That night, after hospital visiting hours are over, we return to Kisoji Station. A pleasant breeze blows through the area. Nice and cool out tonight. Are you worried about Ami, Gabu? I checked to make sure the hospital room had no mirrors and, a cur and the nurse is keeping watch on her. She'll be fine. Yeah. I don't like taking my eyes off her, but she'll probably be fine now. Kakuya's gonna kidnap her again. She'd have her to she she'd have her play a game first. If you're that worried about her, you can go see her first thing in the morning. Anyway, I'm heading home. Tomorrow's gonna be busy and I wanna get some sleep. I'm gonna go see a forensic researcher and verify that report on the cause of the fire. Killer Peach did that, yeah? Let me know if you find anything. I'm not supposed to show investigation material to outsiders, though. You're seriously gonna try and pull that card now? He got me there. I'll contact you tomorrow. See ya. What's the matter, baby? What do you see? You? <laughs> oh, he disappears towards the ticket gates. He takes the train out of here. Where did Amanome go? He was just here. Guess I'll look for him. Hmm, that's a bad sign. Or is he just at a vending machine or something? Cops inside look busy answering the phones. I should quickly move on before I make on eye contact. Don't see anyone at the bus stop. Well, where is he then? It's a building by the station with offices and cram schools. Looks like people are still inside at this hour. A few of the rooms still have lights on. Horrible. <laughs> Amanome comes walking back from over there. Oh, did I leave? I didn't get to say goodbye. Not that I care. What were you doing? Word got out that I escaped the house. I got a call from my pop, so I figured I'd better answer it. He wasn't furious? Oh, he was. Just about yelped my ear off. It was annoying, so I hung up on him. <laughs> oh, that's just gonna make it worse. No worries. Pops has a soft spot for me. He might knock me around a bit, but after that, I'll, it'll be water under the bridge. Not sure if that's letting you off easy or being harsh. Anyway, you got some time to kill, yeah? Come with me for a bit. What's this all of a sudden? I'm stressed after being under surveillance for so long. I'm gonna let off some steam. I'll treat you, so come with me, alright? Sure. Looks like you're up for it. God, my hair is being weird today. No matter how I... Flip it. It looks weird. Let's get going. We pass through the shopping district by Kisoji Station and arrive at the high class high class club. A high class club. Normally minors wouldn't be allowed inside, but I guess Amanome is an exception. We grab seats far farther inside and hostesses quickly position themselves at Amanome's side. He eats and drinks for a bit while chatting up the hostesses. Then, as if remembering something, he makes a phone call. After a while, a well-dressed old man comes up to us. Oh, damn! Look at us! Amanome hoists his feet up on the table. Then, as he munches on some fruit, he gazes down at the man kneeling before him. Hey, Urita. You heard what I said, yeah? Yes! Amanome's gotta have some kind of dirt on this guy. He smiles submissively at Amanome, a kid who's maybe as old as his own grandson. About the redevelopment of Shinza Station. Mind telling me the bidding price that your company offered? Mr. Amanome, that's the company's secret. Is that right? If that's a secret, then I guess I won't keep this a secret. Amanome, Amanome takes a photo out of his breast pocket. Shows the man walking out of the hotel with a young woman. Oh shit! Cheating on your wife. What a horrible guy. I wonder what she'd think. Isn't your daughter about to start middle school? Be a rough time to have to learn about this. Ugh. Hey, Gabu. The man remains silent and Amanome turns towards me. What do you think about this scumbag? 
I guess Amanome wants me to help threaten the guy. What should I say? I mean, even if I say the wrong thing, it'll only make Amanome mad. It's no big deal. I'll just say whatever. Oh shit! This is a thing? Okay. What do I think? What he deserves. <laughs> yeah. That's what Amanome wants to hear. This is what he deserves. If he were my dad, I'd kick his ass. Right? Amanome grins, satisfied. Then he turns back to the man. Hey, Urita. Tell me the company's secret, and I'll just keep this little incident here a secret too. Everyone's happy as long as we both stay quiet. But... I'll even give you a reward. Reward. You're tight on money right now, yeah? Gotta pay off that new building loan you just got, right? What? How'd you know? I researched every last, last little thing about you. If you're not convinced, maybe you'd like me to tell you what you had for lunch one week ago. The man's expression slowly gives way to despair. I guess I should give him another push. Maybe I'll try butting in. Uh, threaten him? Played a good cop. For the reward. Oh no! I, w I was thinking, like... but Because Sage Seiji was saying like he would reward him. So I was like, oh, maybe we should push the reward again. Sympathize with you, old man. Having this annoying guy's eyes on you is rough. Kaba, don't butt in. Amanome scowls at me. But Mr. Amanome, I can't betray my company like that. I'm begging you, please understand. The man starts pleading. He sounds like he's about to cry. Hey, knock it off already. Amanome coldly looks down at the man's white head. It's business. Either you sell me the information or I crush you. Pick one. You're supposed to be my elder, aren't you? Don't you have enough experience to know you're not getting out of this by saying please? Give it a rest. Jeez. Amanome suddenly yells out. Then he glances over at me. Oh shit. Uh, turn it up to 11. Oh god, I don't know. Kick the couch in silence. I couldn't even read that. I guess because Amanome said don't butt in, I should have st stayed quiet. That's going too far. Do whatever you want. You want to leak the photo? Go right ahead. It's better than being bossed around by some kid. Well, shit. The man storms off after yelling at Amanome. <laughs> After a while, Amanome and I leave the club. I have no clue how much it costs. I just took Amanome up on his offer and let him handle it all. I guess that doesn't really matter for the story. Great to finally feel freedom again. I don't think I've had enough yet. Gebu, how about one more bar? I'll pass. I'm getting tired. What are you, a toddler? Ba barely past midnight. Shut up. I didn't get much sleep yesterday. <laughs> Baby. Don't put your paws in the controller. I guess you've had it rough recently. I should put in a little BB cam. <laughs> Look at that satisfied face. <laughs> I suppose we'll call it a night. To be continued after we avenge Maruhashi and Natsumi recovers. After we avenge Maruhashi and Natsumi recovers. Yeah, sounds good. Then I'll be able to empty my head and laugh up like a moron. La laugh it up like a moron with you. Who knows when that will be, though? It's not too far off, man. We'll finish this before summer break's over. That's right. I is it summer break right now? Been so busy, I totally forgot. What seriously? Well, I guess you've always had a one-track mind. I bet most of our classmates are studying their asses off right now for entry exams. <laughs> Are your eyes open? <laughs> He's so comfy. <laughs> Seems unreal. I guess it's because my personal reality has been mess so messed up recently. Things like summer break and school that are normal for everyone else seem totally alien. After all this is finally over, will I even be able to return to my old life? 
All right, let's split up. We'll meet up again tomorrow afternoon. I'll go with you to see Amy. What are you going to do now? Go home? Not a chance. Once I go back, I'm going to be under surveillance again. I'll stay in some random hotel until all this is finished. You could stay at my place. Yeah, hard no on that one. Place is old, cramped, and smelly. Might be fine for a tough guy like you, but someone refined like myself? Impossible. Yeah, yeah, I get it. Do whatever you want. Thanks for the offer, though. All right, good night. This kitty is so comfy. <laughs> you like it? Yeah. Aminome heads to the ticket gates. Guess I'll head back too. Well, this is my place. Ditched me, huh? My apartment has a mirror that connects to the realm of the dead. Feels weird to sleep in a place with something like that sitting in it, but after all I've gone through, this is nothing. I've survived all that for this long. Don't know about the other spirits, but Kakia wants to play her game with me. So she probably won't harm me directly. That's what I decided to think anyway. I realize it's a pretty bold stance to take. It works. I don't think she would break her own rules. She can make up new rules as she goes, but I don't think she would make new rules. I eat some food, take a hot shower, and then start getting ready for bed. I think I'll be able to sleep well for once. <laughs> this kitty. Unbelievable. <laughs> so fucking comfy. Next day. Let's put you there. Go to bed. Time to sleep. Collapsing on the bed, I shut my eyes. Maybe because I haven't been getting much sleep, my consciousness quickly melts into darkness. Okay, that was enough webcam as well. The 20th. I wonder if it ends when August ends. I meet up with Amanome around noon and we head to the hospital where Ami's, Ami is staying. While Amanome keeps Ami company, the doctor explains her diagnosis to me. Ami's body is healthy, but they found some small irregularities in her brain waves. He mentions something about alpha or beta waves, but I can't make sense of it. He says he wants to do a more thorough exam, so he'll be keeping Ami another night. Ami isn't happy to hear that, of course. Hmm. Before evening, Amanome and I return to Kusoji Station. Ugh, this is too right. I'm really close to a headache. When we leave the building, the summer sun's blinding rays shine down on us. Sun's way too bright today. Yeah, I feel the same. This heat makes me want to kill someone. Let's go to the Black Rabbit. I'm feeling like a fried egg right now. Yeah. We run to the Black Rabbit, hurrying along as we flee from the sun. We crank up the air conditioning and pass the time drinking and talking about nothing. Oh, is coming by tonight. Apparently she got a verdict on that report on the cause of the fire. That's good. Sorry I'm late. Be patient. Someone else has got the details. Bun? Ah, I knew it! I feel awful. Middle-aged guys like me are not cut out for this heat. Looks like you're doing well, Gabu. I'm sure you missed me yesterday. You guys are working together? I've been really curious about that report on the cause of the fire, too. So I got her to tell me the results early. But thanks to my curiosity, now I gotta do even more work. I make it a habit to use whoever's handy. <coughs> Apparently this extra work is always doing. So Ban and I will be taking our leave. I would have loved to chat with you more, but if I don't hurry, I'll miss the bullet train. Where in the world are you going? Out west, on a business trip involving Killer or Peach. Oh, I can give you more details. Let's go, Ban. So, see ya. So I guess that excludes them for future ch chapters. Ban and Rose hurriedly leave. Talk about coming and going like a tempest. That hottie with the body was Rose, right? Too bad I didn't get to introduce myself. Well, hopefully that all goes well. 
It involves Killer Peach. What kind of order was it? Before that, I'll tell you more about this. Oh, it takes a familiar document out of her pocket. I'll give it back to you. A fire report. I got a forensic researcher to check out the parts that were blackened and unreadable. As I assumed, it's about the fire at the Momoi department store. You mean that thing Killer Peach, Okayama, talked about on the tape recorder? I'd never heard about it before. No surprise there. It happened ten years ago already. We were snot-nosed brats back then. We weren't interested in the news. Now that I think of it, Gabu, that's about the time I met you, right? Was it? I don't remember. Hey. Keep talking, detective. So what kind of fire was it? Oh, I fall silent for a while and begins to speak in a hushed voice. Momoi department store was an old store in front of Shinza station. Ten years ago, a fire shut it down. Then the Sumi group bought it, demolished it, and built Moon Tower right on that very spot. So that's how they're related. That's probably why the floor of a department store appeared outside the elevator. It must be a supernatural effect caused by a spirit, like at the Midoku residence. The fire happened on the fifth floor in the toy department. Toy department caught fire? On the news, they speculated that an electrical malfunction in the lights caused it. Whatever the cause was, more than 20 people lost their lives in that fire. Phoebe's turning around. Most of the victims were families. It was just before Christmas, so they'd probably come to buy presents. Let me show you. Just really quickly. Now he's sitting like this. <laughs> yeah. You like that? He does. He likes to lie on my arm. That's some horrible timing. Yeah. At least that's what, what was reported on the news 10 years ago. But that isn't the truth. That report made that very clear. The blackened parts had info on the true cause of the fire and the state of the scene. The true cause, huh? On the floor at the scene of the incident, they found traces of gasoline. So it was arson. Exactly. The conditions of the scene leave no room for doubt. The news probably got fed some false info and the evidence got suppressed. Even this report was considered lost because of some accident. Now the question is, who was behind all that? Though you can probably guess based on what you heard from Okayama's voice recorder. Okayama was trying to ask Noboru Ishimaru, the president of the Sumi group, about the fire. She was probably suspicious about the truth behind the fire and Ishimaru's relation to it. Okayama lost her husband and son in the fire. Holy shit! She went after Ishimaru to get revenge and was killed. Aw, she lost the kid. She lost her son that drew the picture. If Killer Peach had the report on her, that means Okayama must have found it somewhere. She was a member of the Diet, so she must have had connections to get it. That's some obsession. If she went to those lengths to get that report, she'd probably be the type to hold on after death. Her family died, after all. I can't say I don't understand her fierce persistence to get to the truth. May I ask something? You say the cause of the fire was arson, but was the culprit ever found? Nope, not yet. It wasn't written in the report either. But it must have been someone with one messed up head. What makes you say that? According to the report, there was a gun found at the scene of the fire, but most of the victims burned to death. If they wanted to kill them, they could have just shot them, but they specifically burned them. And most of the burnt corpses they found were chained together. Oh shit! Chains? What were those for? How should I know? The report lists some possibilities, maybe to restrain the victims or have them watch each other. And one that's... And one that sounds pretty occult too. What do you mean by occult? Well, the arsonists may have been trying to play the demon Tsukuyomi game. Oh, there it is! Wait, did you just say Tsukuyomi? Yeah, that's it. Ami told us. Just remember Kakia talking about it. I'm sure of it. Ami mentioned that earlier. It happened 10 years ago. Oh, the 10 years again. Oh. <gasps> oh no! 
A whisper comes from somewhere. Time for a tale. Demon Tsukuyomi, please come here. It's not over yet, huh? It's not over yet, Snake! But this time it's different. The game always starts when Kakuya tells me the name of the spirit. But this time, Kakuya hasn't shown herself yet. Damn it, I have no idea what's going on. I suddenly feel my consciousness drifting away and instinctively hold my head. Kabu, what's the matter? It's the curse. Kakuya's curse is back. <laughs> you saved Ami! How should I know what Kakuya's deal is? All I know is I'll be in the real trouble if I don't do something about this demon Tsukiyomi by today. What? I guess we gotta act before we think right now. You survived this long, so I'm sure it'll all work out this time too. Hey detectives, tell us everything you know about that damn demon Tsukiyomi game. Alright. Hmm. I love how she's just super cooperative now. I'll tell you what I know. Mm-hmm. Tsukuyomi Yoni. Cool. The Demon Tsukuyomi game was real popular with middle schoolers at the time. If you performed a certain, certain ritual, supposedly a ghost called the Demon Tsukuyomi would appear and grant any wish. No one really knows what the Demon Tsukuyomi itself is supposed to be. Some say its name is taken from the Japanese god of the moon, Tsukuyomi. Apparently because it only shows up on nights when there's a moon. The concept is kind of similar to the Kokuri game, or Ouija board. I, I don't know Kokuri. The demon Tsukiyomi game ritual has to be done on a night when there's a moon. To summon him, you need chains, something to burn, and two hand mirrors. Oh, so you make a path. First, you place the chain down like you're surrounding yourself. The area sectioned off by the chain is supposed to be like the altar for the ritual. Next, you take your offering and burn it in the altar. You can burn anything you want, but its value has got to be proportional to the size of your wish. If your wish isn't granted, then it means the thing you burnt wasn't valuable enough. <gasps> so they burnt all those people? Holy shit, what did they want? Once you light the thing on fire, you have to recite a spell to summon the demon Tsukiyomi before it burns up. Please grant my wish. Once you finish the spell, there is one last thing. You have to use two hand mirrors and join them together. I have like staticky hair sticking to my face, it's annoying. Then the demon Tsukiyomi will appear. And that's everything I know about it. That sounds a little different than the rumors we've heard about the other spirits. It doesn't even mention anyone dying. Between the chains and the fire, it all lines up pretty well with that arson case. Which means the arsonist wasn't trying was trying to perform the demon Tsukiyomi ritual. That's just one explanation. No one but the arsonist knows for sure. So Gabu, what are you gonna do now? Um. So Moon Tower was where it was built, right? I would go there and... Well, I wouldn't play the game because I wouldn't know what to wish for and what to burn. But I would go there rather than gathering info on the internet, I think. Got any reason for that? That one elevator turned back time. Only a spirit can do that. Something similar happened at the Miruka residence too. If the elevator is still doing that, that means something is still there. And it just might be the demon Tsukiyomi. I getcha. Soredeikoka. I guess maybe that makes sense, yeah, that it was two demons at the same time, two monsters. If that depa department store if that department store the elevator goes to is the scene from right after the fire, there might be chains left there, so we can try out the demon Tsukiyomi game. I wouldn't want to know about how I feel about trying it out, but... I'll be going with you, obviously. It's my job to protect you after all. You're gonna have to fix that ghost allergy of yours before you make claims like that. Ugh. I feel like I've come a long way compared to how it was when... 
compared to how I was when this all started. If we're going to Moon Tower, we'll need to prepare first. Ban's not with us. Bleh. I can't speak anymore. Ban's not with us this time, so we can't use the same trick we did before. By the way, what did you ask Ban and Rose to do? Just some minor business. Minor business? I thought it involved Killer Peach. I sent them to Atami, where Okayama's house is. After Okayama died, her personal belongings were sent to her house. I wanted to find out what was in there. If there's a notebook, we might learn something about Killer Peach or the arson case. I can't believe they were fine with being ordered around like that. When I told Bun it would be a good scoop, he was all for it. And I introduced Rose to a nice hot spring inn, which got her real interest interested real fast. Sounds like Bun and Rose are out of reach. They won't be able to help me with this inv inv <laughs> They won't be able to help me with the investigation tonight. So how are we going to sneak into Moon Tower then? I'm going to take a page out of Bun's book. Just leave it to me. Damn. All right, counting on you. I better get going then. Come to Moon Tower in about two hours. I wonder what she's gonna do. Oh, he leaves the bar after that cryptic remark. Well, we have some time to kill. Wanna go get a bite to eat? Apparently there's a new traditional style place by Shinza Station. My treat. Yeah, let's do it. Even if it's just for free food. Yeah, I mean, he has to eat anyway. Might as well be ready for whatever happens at the building. Fancy restaurant by Shinza Station. Food there is mind-blowing, which is to be expected from something so crazy expensive. I would have preferred more meat. Hm. Um... The department store fire was not an accident. Victims were tied up in chains. Yeah, it looks like it's the demon Tsukiyomi ritual. They surround your them with chains. They make an altar and burn something. The incantation needs two mirrors. Join them by facing each other. Facing together. And the wish is granted based on the value of the object burned. But they burned all those people, right? So what? what equals that value? What equals the value of that many lives? Two hours after I split with Oi, I arrive at Shinza Station. It's a Friday night, but weirdly there aren't many people out. I wonder how Mrs. Detective will do. It's Oi. Yo, I'm at Moon Tower. Good timing. I just finished persuading him. Persuading, is it? I just had a nice long chat with the head of security who Bon bribed is all. Told him if he didn't listen to what I said, I'd haul him in for a breach of trust. He simmered down real quick after that. Wow, you really are a shady cop. What else is I supposed to do? We don't have a lot of options here. Anyway, the back door is unlocked, so get inside. I'll be waiting on the roof. I got something I want to show you. Okay, I'll meet you there. Seems all obstacles have been removed. Time to march into battle, Gabu. She is... Crazy handy to have as a partner, though. Oh, eh? I would not give her shit for this. She's helping us out. Oh, whoops. Even this late at night, the asphalt is still hot as I head towards Moon Tower. No one's in sight, so I slip in the back door. Unlike outside, it's cool in here. Guess the air conditioner is still running. I reflexively take a good look around, a quick look around, but I didn't need to bother. There's no one else in the hall. The detective said she'd be on the roof, yeah? Who knows what she wants us to show us, but we better get a move on. Oh, the the burn memorial thing. That's on the roof. There are probably names on it? There's probably two Okayamas on it then if she lost her husband and son in the fire. I bet it's D-Man. Yep. Search the broken red monster in the place that exists no more. Oh, so fire extinguisher or something in the Christmas department thing? Don't wouldn't know how to get there though from here. I guess if I go to the other floor. Ugh, my neck. I have to almost stop recording because 
This headache is killing me. Just stiffing up everything. Like my entire neck just feels like a bar of steel going into my head. The roof of Moon Tower is an open terrace. It's cloudy tonight, but if it wasn't, we'd probably get a great view of the starry sky. I like looking down at the lowly peons from this high. Who exactly are these lowly peons? Hey, you finally made it. Pretty nice spot, isn't it? Pretty fond of it, so I come up here every now and then. You come here for a reason? Well, you know. So what are we meeting on the roof for? This. I glance down at Oi's feet. Nice toes. <laughs> she stands by the only bare patch of ground. There is a stone monument in the center. Time to save. Finally. It's been a while. Um, 50 minutes in. Oh, God. I think this is a good spot though. We're in a new chapter. It's a little bit shorter than I would want, but don't know what's gonna happen next and I am fighting a headache so I'll just record more quickly uh, or soon I mean uh, probably tomorrow so there'll be another episode soon I'm glad everyone really likes it and um, yeah that, that'll be it for now so thank you so much everyone for watching and I'll see you soon in another episode thank you so much bye